Hey, what's going on guys? JQ back with Tech Creation, where I use technology for a creation. So I was hesitant to pick up the Galaxy Buds because I already have a couple of solid pairs of truly wireless earbuds already, so I didn't see the point. But then I just had to acknowledge all of the buzz around them and I went ahead and picked them up anyway. And for only a $130 price tag, here's what I think. So this is one of the more generic looking earbud cases that I've seen. And there's a variety of different case covers available on Amazon to choose from in case you want to give it a little bit of character. I'll leave some links down below. But for the most part, I mean, this is it. A simple shimmery coating with subtle Samsung branding in the center. And it does look slippery, but it's actually very easy to grip. So I wouldn't worry about having this slip out of your hand when you're carrying it around. And I chose the black ones because the white ones remind me too much of the AirPods, which by the way, the AirPods 2 is in house. So that video is coming up next. Stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss that one. So taking a look around, you have a USB-C port that's for charging, which is a perfect match for all of my existing gadgets. I'm so glad earbud manufacturers finally began adopting because that makes me a happy consumer. And aside from that, I can't forget to mention the wireless charging coil underneath for wireless charging. Now there's two things in this world that I would always gladly pay for, and that's convenience and peace of mind. And just being able to set down the Galaxy Buds for charging and forget it, especially when used together with the Galaxy Galaxy S10's wireless power sharing feature that allows it to wirelessly charge other devices. This combo right here definitely has me spoiled and most certainly upped my expectations when it comes to future truly wireless earbuds. Now on the front of the case, there's a ridge that makes it incredibly easy to pop open and not all earbud cases are like that. So I definitely got to acknowledge this. Now, when you first open the case, you may find that the lid appears to be a little bit loose. It almost doesn't feel right, but if you just push it a little bit further, it snaps and stays in place. I had quality concerns up until I figured that out so rest assured there's nothing wrong with it and it's using one of those resistant hinges that snaps closed as opposed to a magnetic one but surprisingly it shuts tight enough that it won't bust open in your bag or pocket which is always a good thing in my book so in case anybody watching has been living under a rock and is brand new to truly wireless earbuds the case itself provides a charge to the earbuds whenever they're inside which is standard for all truly wireless earbuds and when charging both the case and earbuds are charged simultaneously whether wired or wireless, which is great. Now the LED battery indicator right in the center of the case lights up green or red, depending on the status of the earbuds themselves. And when closed again, a second LED on the outside indicates the status of the case itself, but this time with also an amber LED. It's all pretty straightforward, but one thing I need to clarify is that the red LED inside of the case can either mean actively charging or low battery, which I think is kind of stupid because you never really know which one it is until you actually take the earbuds out. I think they should have just used yellow or amber for the inside as well. I think that would have made a lot more sense, but hey, what do I know? I'm just a consumer, right? So the earbuds sit magnetically secured inside the case, but the magnets are not that strong. It doesn't take that much force for me to shake them out the case, which tells me that if this case takes even the slightest fall, those earbuds are gonna go flying right out, so. Just a little bit of a precaution for you guys. So you get three earbud tip sizes and I find that the biggest one works best for me. It just gives me a better seal, which makes a huge difference when it comes to sound, which I'll talk more about later on. Now, as soon as the Galaxy Buds are out the case, your Galaxy device shows a prompt to connect, just like the AirPods do. And as far as the initial process and connection goes, it's extremely quick. I expect nothing less when it comes to Bluetooth 5.0 and I don't really have to go over that too much. But as soon as it reaches your ear, you're greeted with two audio cues and that lets you know that you're good to go and you're connected. And by the way, the Galaxy Buds are very comfortable to wear. I don't feel any pressure of any kind. They're super lightweight and the wingtips don't irritate my ears over prolonged use like some other earbuds tend to do. And there's even been a few times where I would just leave them in my ear when nothing's playing. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's ever done that. And that's just because of how unbothered I was having these in my ear. So that's just to give you an idea of how comfortable and lightweight I think the Galaxy Buds are. And on the off chance, if they were to fall out your ear, you can always use the Find My Earbuds feature from inside the Galaxy Wearables app. This lets off a bird chirping sound from the earbuds. It's supposed to make it easier to find them, but you can only really hear the chirping when the room is really, really, really quiet. So don't expect this to work in public, but hopefully you won't ever have to use that feature in the first place to begin with. So taking a look around the earbuds, you have these charging coils, a touch sensor that tells the earbuds when it makes contact with your skin, a single outer microphone on each, along with glossy touch pads. So I'm not really a fan of how Samsung executed their touch controls. So real quick, a single tap will always be play pause and a double and triple tap will always be skip or previous track. And those stay the same regardless. Now the touch and hold feature on each earbud is what you can customize from inside the Galaxy wearables app. So being able to choose between voice command, quick 
dynamic ambient sound or ambient sound, the app allows you to combine either of the three features between both earbuds. And those features are cool and all, but the problem with this is that regardless of which feature you choose, you lose your volume controls. And I don't like that. I'm sure Samsung could have found a way to keep the volume toggles constant, regardless of what settings you choose, just the same way they did for the track controls. I mean, if Sennheiser pulled it off with their momentums, I know it's definitely possible. Which by the way, if you haven't seen my review on that one, make sure you go check that out. Also from the Galaxy Wearables app, you can manage which notifications you want read back to you. So like your emails, messages, your calls. You can select individual apps or just select all, or you can just turn them all off altogether if you find them annoying. I don't really care for this feature too much, so I just leave it off. So I don't like that you have to take out both earbuds in order to pause playback as opposed to just one. And then when you put them back in your ear, they don't resume playback. So it's like, I know it could have been done, but they just didn't do it. So that's really what's bothering me about it. So exploring the rest of the features presented a few more issues for me as well. I must have bad luck or something, but the first being is that I can't use the voice assistant feature. Whenever I use either earbuds to launch my preferred voice assistant, I receive the standard prompt to choose, select always, but then next time around when I try to launch it, I receive that same prompt again as if it's just never saving to memory. And this happens over and over and over and over again. I tried all three assistants and none of them worked. I updated the firmware on the earbuds and I also repaired them as well. And just to rule out my phone, to make sure it wasn't my phone, I went ahead and tried the same thing with my Sennheiser Momentum earbuds and that feature worked it just fine. So that tells me that the Galaxy Buds definitely have a serious bug that needs to be sorted out. However, I'm not really too mad because I find that the mics on these earbuds are kind of weak. Which brings me to my second issue in regards to the ambient noise feature. I just find that it's not that effective and all other earbuds that I've tried do a much better job at bringing out that outside noise in together with what you're listening to. Even on phone calls, people kept telling me to speak up because my voice sounded muffled and I hate having to yell when I'm speaking on the phone. And the only time that I really recognize ambient noise is when either my music is really, really low or I'm listening to dialogue like people talking or if I'm just not playing anything at all. That's when I would notice traffic, or wind coming in. And I think it's safe to say most of us enjoy listening to things at least at the halfway volume mark. And at that volume, you won't really hear the ambient noise feature at all. And they do get loud, but you really have to like crank it all the way up, which I guess is not necessarily a bad thing now that I think about it, depending on who you are and how sensitive your ears are. So I won't be too hard on that topic. Now, another issue that I have and guys, I know it sounds like I'm being hard on these earbuds, but these are things that are actually happening to me. So when the touch sensors on both earbuds make contact with your skin, that is what enables the ambient noise feature. The problem is the earbuds will be sitting flush and tight against my ears and that feature will be grayed out because it doesn't recognize that it's actually touching my skin. And I actually had to wiggle the earbuds around in my ear and readjust a lot in order for that feature to be enabled. And not that I really would wanna use the ambient feature, but even if I wanted to, it would only be enabled about 50% of the time because of that issue. And now that brings me to the more positive part of this review, and that is the sound quality. The Galaxy Buds sound great. I wouldn't characterize these as bass heavy, which is not a bad thing, but more like clean, balanced, it's not too colored. So as I mentioned earlier, as long as you're wearing the right sized ear tips, that seal is gonna help keep all of that music inside, allowing you to hear more of the instruments. And I usually don't like tweaking with the equalizer, but I recommend enabling it and just leaving it on dynamic. And the difference is very noticeable when it's on or off. Everything else sounds a little bit too filtered and too colored. And I just think that dynamic is the perfect balance. And I believe that would be suitable for the average listener. But yeah, overall, I think the Galaxy Buds are very doable for day-to-day -day listening. And I'm actually surprised how much I've actually been using them and not just for review purposes, just because I enjoy using them. <laughs> and as far as battery life is concerned, it's great. They're rated for about six hours of playback. And I'd have to say that that's actually true. I'm the kind of person who likes to listen to podcasts for several hours at a time. I didn't do any extreme testing, but considered that my benchmarking. And I've never once had them die on me in the middle of listening to something. So in conclusion, the only minor drawback for me is that the case only holds one charge. Most other earbuds usually carry at least two recharge cycles on the case. Um, so yeah, it's not really that big of a deal because again, they, they last pretty long and whenever I see it red, usually pretty good about setting it down to charge. And given that the case only holds one charge, the upside to that is that it doesn't take that long to recharge. So I think it all kind of balances each other out. And I think if you just do that, you'll be good. Despite my negative start to this review, 
I think that the Galaxy Buds is a great buy. And truth be told, most of my complaints, despite them actually being real issues, are things that most people really won't even care about. Most people don't ask for much, and this is probably the most affordable, great sounding pair of earbuds on the market at the time of this video. And one that I can honestly recommend picking up as a gift for somebody, or just for yourself, if this is your first pair of truly wireless earbuds. Anyway, that just about wraps it up. Let me know if you guys agree or disagree with some of the things I said about the Galaxy Buds down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed this review and you found it to be useful and it helped you make a decision, Show me some love by pressing that like button and share it with a friend. And if you're new to the channel and it's your first time, make sure you subscribe and turn on the alerts. This way you're notified whenever I drop another awesome tech video. As always, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace out.